Hey guys, Francis here. So what is ICP AES? How does it work? Let's start with AES, Atomic Emission Spectrometry. Chances are you have already seen atomic emission before. Fireworks, that's atomic emission. The different colors in fireworks is due to the presence of different metal salt. For example, the yellow light we see in fireworks is actually the atomic emissions of sodium. So how does AES work? In brief, AES involves three major steps. Atomization, where we atomize our sample, converting it into gas phase atoms and ions. Excitation, where we provide sufficient energy to promote the valence electrons of an atom from the ground state to an excited state. Both atomizations and excitations can be achieved efficiently using ICP. And finally, relaxation, where the excited atoms relax back to the ground state, giving up their energy as photons. This is when the atomic emission occurs. Let's take a closer look at sodium atom as an example. Sodium has one valence electrons in the 3s orbitals. If we supply enough heat or electrical energy, we can promote the electrons from the ground state 3s orbitals to 3p, 4p or 5p excited state orbitals. After a few nanoseconds, the excited atoms relax back to the ground state, giving up the energy as atomic emissions. As shown in this energy diagram here, the wavelength of the emitted light depends on the energy gap between the atomic orbitals, which is unique for every element in the periodic table. In this example, this wavelength of 589 nanometers is responsible for the yellow light we see in fireworks that contain sodium salts. Here are some examples of atomic emission spectra of different elements. As we can see here, one element can have a set of characteristic emission wavelength. ICP AES take advantage of the unique line spectrum of elements to identify and to quantify them. The ICP AES instrument we will be using in this experiment can analyze more than 70 elements in the periodic table with very low detection limits in the PPB region as shown here. In AES, the atomization and excitations can be achieved using either flame or inductively coupled plasma. Then the next question would be, which of these atomization methods is better? The typical atomization temperature using flame is around 1700 to 3100 degrees Celsius, depending on the fuel and oxidant we use, while the atomization temperature using ICP is around 4,000 to 6,000 degrees Celsius. Flame atomizers are usually used in AES and AES, while ICPs are used in AES and MESPEC. When it comes to AES, ICP atomizer is usually preferred over flame due to the much higher atomization temperature of ICP. But why is it so? This is because the emission intensity depends on Boltzmann distribution. According to Boltzmann distribution, the ratio between the population of the excited state and the population of the ground state can be calculated using this equation, where Gj and G0 are the degeneracy of an excited state and the ground state respectively. Delta E is the energy gap between the excited state and the ground state. K is the Boltzmann constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. At room temperature, the population of the ground state is close to 100%, while the population of the excited state is close to 0%. In fact, most atoms are found in the ground state even at a high temperature flame. What this means is, if you are looking at atomic absorption, there is no problem since the ground state is already highly populated. However, if you are looking at 
atomic emission, we need to find a way to increase the population of the excited state. This can be achieved by increasing the atomization temperature. Let's take a look at sodium atom as an example. For sodium atoms, the energy gap between the 3p and 3s orbitals corresponds to an emission wavelength of 589 nanometer, which can be converted to joules easily. The degeneracy of the 3p and 3s quantum states are equal to 6 and 2 respectively. If you are using flame with an atomization temperature of 3000 Kelvin, the ratio between the excited state and the ground state populations will be equal to 6 over 2, which is the degeneracy of the excited state and the ground state, multiplied by exponential of negative delta E over the Boltzmann constant multiplied by 3000 Kelvin. And we will get the ratio to be equal to 8.75 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 4. So what would the Boltzmann distribution be if we were to use ICP with an atomization temperature of 6000 Kelvin? You may pause this video for 2 minutes now to try out the calculation. Welcome back. As we can see, simply changing the atomization temperature from 3000 Kelvin to 6000 Kelvin results in a 58 times increase in the excited state population, hence achieving a higher sensitivity in the case of sodium atoms. That's why when it comes to AES, ICP atomizer is usually a better choice than flame atomizer. Now that we understand how AES works, the next question will be, what is ICP? How does it work? See you in the next video. Bye.